we've snuck in a lot of things that people might not have expected. There's just a lot in there. Yeah. <laughs> Katsuma's one of the original six Moshi monsters. Something to do with cats and Satsumas mixed together, uh, I think. But everyone seemed to really click with the character. He's got a bit of attitude, a little bit of quirkiness. He's also playing a starring role in the movie, so it just seemed like a real hero to uh, put into his own DS game. Most people know Sumo from a Sega games, of course. This has been the first game we've done with Mind Candy, and it's been a, a refreshing experience. I knew of Moshi, but I didn't know a lot about it, so I had to go and do lots of research, like go on the website and read up on it. And I realised that it was actually going to be a great universe to go and play it, uh, because nobody would really done a traditional game within that space, you know. All the design team are gamers, so um, we all had a wealth of knowledge of platform games and what had and hadn't worked in other titles. We sat down and we thought, okay, what's the best way to make this a game? How can we make an adventure? How can we make it a journey? What can we do which is going to surprise players? And then we looked at the big world map of the whole Moshi universe and went, well, what we could do is we could literally go, we'll start at the bottom, we'll work our way for some woods, then we'll climb and climb and climb until we wind up in, in space, effectively. That gave us a great basis for interest in levels. The way we've designed the game is we've taken a lot of classic gameplay elements from other well-known platformers, adapted them and introduced them in a way that means it's accessible to all. We wanted each world and level to have either a specific theme, whether it's something like the uh, mines level in a volatile volcano, you expect to find lava, you'd expect it to be hazardous, but also that there'll be uh, moving platforms and switches. You'd feel a sense of danger, but excitement at the same time. At the start of the game, we find out that Katsuma is the only Moshi monster who's not being captured by uh, Strangelove. And he's going to have to go on a venture to go and rescue his friends and to stop Strangelove stealing the power of Moshi Pitches. So as you play through the levels, there's a variety of what you do. So there's some running, there's some jumping, there's some combat, there's some hidden areas, there's some mini games, there's time limits, there's Moshlings. Moshlings are hidden throughout the levels, they're caged up, they've been collected. We're going to shoot up in the game, you know, you want to fight against a gigantic boss, you know. When it came to introducing enemies into the game, we knew that we wanted the glumps as a set, but you need more variety and you need it to work into the story itself. And we wanted something that was recognisably Moshi Monsters, but we didn't want to use Moshlings because they're good guys, they're, they're the guys you want to rescue, the guys you collect. So we discussed the idea of what we could do with the Moshlings that would make them evil in a way that you could kill them and feel okay. And you can't get more evil than a robot, can you? So you're defeating those, and you're rescuing the Moshlings, you're rescuing the monsters. There's a lot in this game, isn't there? We should probably have made it smaller. <laughs>It's not just cuteness, it, it's action and it's adventure. You want him to succeed, that's like watching an exciting cartoon. It's just great, I think there's, there's a lot of content in a very tightly nicely made package.